Hi, welcome back to Phil 320 Deductive Logic. I'm Matthew Brown, and today we're going to be talking about truth tables. Truth tables are a method that we have for evaluating complex expressions in SL. Before we get into the details, first I want to share with you a quick logic puzzle of the day. Here's how it goes. A boat has a metal ladder coming down the side. The metal ladder has six rungs spaced one foot apart. At low tide, the water came up to the second rung from the bottom of the ladder. Then the water level rose two feet as the tide came in. Which rung did the water now hit? Think about it. Let us know uh, what you think the answer is. You can weigh in on Discord or in the comments of the video. Okay, now let's start talking about truth tables. Truth tables take advantage of a feature of it of SL, which is that it is truth functional. The truth value of the compound sentences in SL depends only on the truth values of the atomic sentences that make it up, plus the rules for the connectives and how they transform the truth values. We already saw some examples of truth tables. We call them the characteristic truth tables of the connectives. Um, we'll go back over them here in just a second. Um, and when we did that last time in unit two, we, um, we used T and F to represent the values of true and false. We can also use the numerical values one and zero, one representing true and zero representing false. And in the book, typically they use those one and zero instead of true and false. We'll use both um, in different examples and homework assignments, just so we learn both ways of doing it. Um, uh, so when we use the ones and zeros, for example, in the truth table for the negation, it looks like this. In the left-hand column, we have our simple atomic sentence A, and then on the right-hand side, the uh, expression not A, right? And in the, uh, in the left-hand side, where we have our atomic sentence, we just wanna make sure we go through all the permutations, all the possible options. And then we can give the, um, the values for the negation on the right. Um, here it is, uh, it just flips the truth value from one to zero, or true to false, and from false to true, or zero to one. And we can do this for all of the different expressions, all the different um, connectives uh, of SL, right? Um, so for example, for the conjunction, it's true when both A and B are true. Um, for the disjunction, it's true when either A or B are true or both. The conditional is a little bit uh, more complicated in that it is true when both A and B are true, and it's true whenever A is false, um, or, uh, but it's false when A is true and B is false, right? That's the only case in which the conditional connective gives you false. And then the biconditional is true whenever A and B have the same truth value, either when both are true or both are false. So what the truth table shows you is how the different connectives take truth values as input and spit out a, a, a new truth value as the output, right? And we can do this for really complex expressions as well, right? So um, here'd be a good place to pause the video, look at this rather complex expression and try on your own to uh, come up with the truth table. So have a look, pause the video for a second, see what you come up with. Have you done it? What did you think? Um, let's go through it step by step so you get a better sense of how we do this. So first, we wanna take our truth values for our simple atomic expressions, A and B, and copy them over um, wherever those appear. So we copy the uh, A truth values over under the A and the B truth values under the B. You might ask, why do we have the truth values one and zero in the order that they are under A and B? And it doesn't really matter what order they're in as long as you get all of the possible combinations. But this sort of pattern 
of 11001010. You'll see it uh, uh, again and again. It's an easy way to remember. And I'll show you what it looks like when you add a third uh, truth value and so on. So, so first we copy over the uh, truth values from our atomic sentences, okay? And eventually we're going to get the truth value for the whole expression based on what we put underneath the main connective here, which in this case is the biconditional. But first we have to go through all of the sub expressions, all the parts of this complex expression. So let's start on the left with the disjunction A or B. As we know, A or B is true whenever either A or B is true. So that's how that part goes. Now let's look at the right-hand expression. It's also kind of complex. It's got that negation in front of the antecedent A. So we want to make sure we have got that right. Okay. We know that that is um, going to be uh, just the reverse of whatever A is. And then we have the conditional, right? And again, the conditional is true whenever the antecedent, that's not A in this case, is true. Um, so it's true, the conditional is true in both of these, uh, these first two rows. It's also true in this third row because the antecedent, not A, is true, and the consequent, B, is also true. But it is false in this last row where um, not A is true, but B is false. And then for the biconditional, what we need to do is we need to compare the truth values on either side, right? So on the left-hand side of the biconditional, it's one. And on the right-hand of the biconditional, it's one in this row. And so what we're gonna put under the biconditional is also one, right? We can go line, row by row, line by line, and do that same comparison. Here it's gonna again be one because they both are one, they match. They match in this row, so it's one. They match in this row, so it's one again. Um, and then we see, once we've completed the truth table for this expression, it's one in every row, right? In every condition, it is one, it's true. This means that this complicated expression is a tautology. Here's another expression. I'm going to give it away a little bit um, and tell you that the statement is contingent. And I'm going to ask you to show that it's contingent by filling out the truth table. So here's another place where uh, I'd like you to pause the video and um, try to do the truth table on your own. Try to fill out all the, all the rows and all the columns um, and, and evaluate your main expression, which in this case, uh, your main connective is the conditional. So fill out the complete truth table. All right, did you get it? Let's start with our, just filling out for our atomic sentences here, A, B, and C. Again, um, we're just trying to get all of the permutations down. And the typical way that I'm gonna do it is um, for the right hand most expression, which is C in this case, it's just alternating one, zero, one, zero, one, zero. The next one over, it's going to alternate half as often, so it's one one zero zero one one zero zero, and then the next one it's going to alternate again half as often. So here it's one 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 zero 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 zero. That gives you all the possible permutations, and you can pause and check it out if you want to confirm that that's true. Okay, now we're going to again copy over the atomic sentence truth values, right, and then we have to go again column by column under the different parts of this expression, moving from the atomic expressions to the more and more complex parts, right? From the inside out, you might say, right? So the biconditional looks like this. Again, it's where the truth values match. It's one, where they don't match, it's zero. The negation is just the opposite. The conditional is true whenever the antecedent is false or whether whenever both the antecedent and the consequent are true. And again, at any point you want to confirm what I'm what I'm showing you here, just pause the video and check it over. But that's right in this case. And then if we go through a little bit more slowly, the main connective here, the conditional, right, we see it's one in this first row because both sides are one. It's one in this row because both sides are one. 
It's one in the next four rows because the left-hand side, the antecedent, is zero or false. It's one in this row because, again, the biconditional is one and the conditional on the right is one, so it, they match again. And it's only in this last row where we put a zero because the truth value of the biconditional, A if and only if B, is one. And the truth, but the truth value of the but the truth value of the conditional, not C, if not C, then A, is zero, right? And so it's these, you know, these last two rows is where we see actually the statement is contingent. What it means for the statement to be contingent is that it could be true or false. Both are possible. The way we show that with a truth table is we show that there are rows where we have both truth values. We can also fill out truth tables to evaluate more than one expression at a time. For example, I have two expressions here. If not A, then B, and if not B, then A, right? Pause the video for a second and go over uh, this truth table. Try to fill it out on your own. Okay, let's check and see if you got it right. So again, I'm copying over the atomic sentences. I've got my negation over here. That gives uh, just the opposite of A. And I'll go ahead and do the negation over here as well. It gives me the opposite of B. And then I fill out for um, the two conditionals and I get these values, right? Um, and again, it, you can just confirm that based on the characteristic truth table for the conditional. If I compare, our two main connectives here, the truth values for the two expressions, you see that they're the same on every row. It's one, 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 zero, right? This proves that these two expressions are logically equivalent. So we can use a truth table in this way to prove logical equivalence. We can also use a truth table to evaluate an argument. So here's a very simple argument. If A then B, if B then C, Therefore, if A, then C. It seems pretty intuitive. Here's uh, the truth table to start out with, and you can go ahead and pause the video and try filling it out on your own. Hopefully that was pretty easy because these expressions are not, are not very complex. They're just a single connective in each case, right? Again, we copy over our atomic sentences, and then we can see for the conditional, it's true, it's true. Here it's false because you've got a one in the antecedent and a zero in the consequent. And then because these last four uh, have a zero in the antecedent, we know they're all true. Similarly here, we're gonna get true, false, true, 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 false, true, true. And for our last uh, conditional, we're gonna get true, false, because again, one and zero is false true, false, and then we've got zeros in the antecedent the rest of the way, so it's true in all of those cases. So that's now we filled out the truth table. How do we use this to think about validity? Remember the definition of validity. Whenever all the premises are true, the conclusion also must be true. So we only concerned about rows where our premises are true. Let's look at this first premise. It's true here in the first row and the second row and the last four rows. Look at our second premise. It's true here in the first row the th and uh, these other rows, right? Um, but we only have to worry about those rows where both premises are true, right? So that's here, 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 and here, okay? Now that we know um, which rows matter for evaluating validity, we have to look over at the conclusion and see what the truth values of the conclusion are. Well, in this row it's true, and in all of them it's true, right? That means that this is a valid argument, right? So we've used a truth table here to show that this is a valid argument. Validity just means, in a sense, for SL anyway, that you can show for every line in the truth table where the premises are true, the conclusion is also true. That's our method for demonstrating validity.
So here's some more examples where we can look at uh, comparing multiple expressions in SL, right? And we can not only ask about equivalence, we can also use truth tables to evaluate consistency or inconsistency, right? So why don't you take a second and fill out this truth table? Okay, let's see. So those are the truth values you should have gotten. Here I've used T's and F's instead of ones and zeros just to mix it up and show that both notation systems are valid. As we did before to evaluate logical equivalence, we compare the columns. And in this case, we see again, these two expressions are logically equivalent. If there was any line where they differed in their truth value, we would know they were inequivalent or not equivalent. What if we wanna know are these expressions consistent? Well, what we have to do here is look at um, whether there is any row where both expressions are true. And there are several rows like that, right? Um, so but we only need one to know that they're consistent. So this tells us that they are consistent. Let's look at another example. Pause the video and try to fill out this truth table. Okay, so again, here are the values you should have gotten. And again, for equivalence, we compare the main connectives and we see they are equivalent. They're false in every row, right? Because both of these expressions are contradictions, right? Um, so we've shown that each expression is a contradiction. All contradictions are logically equivalent, so the two expressions are logically equivalent. So that's great. We also know that the two expressions are inconsistent. How do we know that? We know that because all pairs of contradictions are inconsistent because there's no row where they're both true, right? Because the contradictions are never true. So this is how we use truth tables to evaluate complex expressions in SL uh, using their truth functional nature. Next, I wanna show you a little bit about how to use Carnap to do truth tables. So here I've loaded up a problem in Carnap created by PD Magnus, and I'm gonna show you how to uh, use it to fill out the truth table. So here we go. In this problem, the truth values for the atomic sentences have already been copied over. In some of the problems in your practice exercises, that'll be the case. In others, you'll have to do it yourself by hand just to practice. And what we do here is we go through and we, uh, we select the appropriate truth value um, according to the connectives, right? So we'll start here with this expression and we'll go through. This is conjunction, so we know it's true wherever they are both true and it's false everywhere else, like so. Okay, now that we've done this expression, we can do the expression it's included in, in, which is this conditional. And we see we have a one and a one here, so that's true. We have a one and a zero here, so that's zero. We have a one and a zero again, zero, one, zero, zero. Zero, one is gonna be one. We actually don't have to look over here. Anytime there's a zero in the antecedent, we know it is true, it's a one. Okay, now let's move over here to this complex expression. Um, let's start with a negation, that's an easy one because it just flips the uh, truth value to its opposite. Okay, can't do the conditional yet because we have to evaluate this expression. First, we gotta do the negations. So that's again, just flipping to the opposite. Now we can do the conjunction, and that's only going to be true wherever both of the conjuncts are true. So it's false here, false here, false here, true here, it's one and one, and then false here, false here, false here, and it's true here, one and one. Okay, so this expression is done. Now we can come back to this conditional. So first off, in these first four rows, the antecedent, not E, is zero, it's false. So we know the conditional is true in all four of those rows. And then these last four rows, not E is one, 
right? It's true, so we just have we have to look over here to the conjunction. One and zero, we know that's zero. One and zero, zero. One and zero, zero. One and one, that's one, that's true. Okay, finally now we can do the main connective for our expression, which is the conjunction. So we're comparing this conditional here and this conditional here, and it's gonna be true wherever they're both true. So here we've got a one and a one, that's one. Here we've got a zero, okay, so we know this is false. Zero, false, zero, false. Here it's a one, right, okay, and here it's a zero, okay, so that's zero. And it's, it's also zero and zero here, so it's zero. And then in this last row, it's one here, and it's one here, so it's one. Let's check our answers, see if we got it right. Success, so that means we got it right. That's how we're gonna use the truth tables in Carnap. And then uh, sometimes there will be problems like this, which ask you to look at your uh, truth tables and figure out what kind of sentence we have. We see there are both ones and zeros in our, uh, in our column for our main connective, so we know that's a contingent sentence, right? All right, so that is how we use Carnap to do truth tables. Why don't you go ahead and try it out with the first three sets of practice exercises, um, however many of those you need to do to feel comfortable. The best way to, to learn truth tables is not to really watch someone else do it, but to do it yourself and do lots of practice uh, problems. Okay, so give it a go, and I will see you in the next lecture for Unit 3 where we talk in a little bit more detail about truth tables and look at some additional examples. Best of luck, and see you soon. Bye.